No, I'm not muted. Okay, good. Um, it's worth 150 points out of around 1,000. I do have a file naming convention. I don't mark you down if you don't do it. It's just nice to get used to doing file naming conventions. You might need to do this so at some places that you work. Like for me, sometimes when we have to like submit a form or something, they'll tell us how they want us to name the form. So it's good practice. Your last name underscore WP1 for writing project one. Um, it tells you what learning objectives this assignment aligns to and the genre. We haven't talked about genre yet, but we'll talk about it a lot more going forward. As far as genre, um, I'm assuming that you all have heard of it with respect to music genres and movie genres. Um, so it's the same thing with writing. Length of paper, three to five pages. You do not get penalized if it's too long. Now, if it's more than five pages, much more, sometimes there can be a problem with focus. So I really have, I've been teaching the class for 20 plus years. And I think that this assignment is doable at a four point level in five pages. So if you're getting to 10 pages, then I think there might be some material that you don't need to give me. What you can do if you, if you get too long is you save your material, you, you try to cut and be more concise and then you save that piece, what I always do, because I always write too much. You save that piece of writing for your personal self to use for another class, to use later in this class. Just, I know that sometimes it feels for me, it feels difficult to cut things out, but I do it and I just put all the stuff I cut onto one document and then I just save it for if I need it later. Okay, if you're too short, okay, theoretically, am I grading by page length? No, not at all. I do grade by the rubric though, and is, it, have it, is there some analysis in there? Is there some detail in there? So if it's one page, theoretically, it could be a 4.0. I haven't seen a one-page memoir that's a 4.0 yet, but I'm sure somebody could figure out how to do it. It would have to be really brilliant. It would have to give meet all the elements of the rubric within a page, you know, that kind of thing, and have details and everything else. Double space. Don't forget double spaced. Generally, 11 or 12 point fonts. And by the way, the format stuff we go over that. I find that students really like the format information. I find they really, really like to talk about format. So yeah, I have a video about how to format and there's rules and everything. Um, depending on whether you're using APA or MLA is going to decide your format. That also it stands for Modern Language Association. Again, we're going to get to it later. In MLA, um, there's rules, like you have one inch margins, um, you double space, you indent your paragraph, and then APA has different rules. That's American Psychological Association. So it goes with the different disciplines. Chicago style is what the historians use. With that one, you see a lot of footnotes. So far, I've never had students do Chicago style. Um, it's the most complicated of the three ways to do things. I don't know what the rules are. I don't memorize these rules. I have to look like up online or in a book or something. You know, online is what I do now. Okay, you are not required to have sources for this paper. So you're not required to have sources. Um, my advice is to kind of avoid using sources. You're, you're the source for this paper. So the reason that, there's multiple reasons I start with this assignment, and one of the reasons is we haven't, learned about how I want you to do documentation yet and how we, we asked you to do it in the, write, in the writing program at Lansing Community College. I haven't gotten there yet. We have, we have too many things that we need to talk about for, before the mini memoirs do to also throw research in on top of all that. I would completely overwhelm everybody. So, um, but if you decide to quote from an outside source, if you decide to 
talk to your mom and quote what she says, this kind of thing, then you do need to use documentation. So you're going to have to jump ahead into like weeks five, six, seven, eight, nine, and go and look at some of the materials in there, or maybe you already know how to do it. Some people do know, and they already learned it in high school. Maybe you just like a challenge, so you feel like doing it. But again, the emphasis is on you, your personal life experiences. So just to stay within five pages, it's unlikely that you're going to have space for a bunch of research. So I would hold off on that, and I would try to be talking about my own experience with whatever it is. I would try to get my memories in there. I would try to get details in, which we haven't talked about how to add details. I'm sure many of you know this already, how to do details, but I would just try to really layer in my own experiences. That's what I would go with for the mini memoir. And I would not, you're not going to, you know, I would not be trying to do the research piece too much. Okay, focus. The text you write should focus on one aspect of your life. This aspect will be the topic for your course project. And we did give some examples about that. Yeah, she wrote about narcissism. I've had, I had one student write about welding, um, something about, some theory about welding, and it was really good. And I mean, I've had students write about like football, baseball, which I'm really ignorant about sports, but there's all this technical stuff with sports. So yeah, anything, any topic is good. Um, the more that you know about the topic in some ways, the better, but yeah. Uh, when students struggle, it's rare, but when a student struggles, it's because the topic is so philosophical. It's really hard to write about your personal experience. Like, um, like, and I try, I try to suggest something else, but sometimes the writer just wants to do that topic, so they go with it. But it can be a big struggle. So um, I'm, I'm trying to give you an example. So the student wanted to write about what is art. I, I don't even remember if this was the exact topic. It was something like, what is art? And what is art? What are you, what, how do you write a memoir about what is art? So you have to write about why the question of what art is is important to you as a human being. So I'm not sure what, what, you, what, would, what would you focus on in your memoir. So I think that person really struggled. Um, there's topics like that, which now if you wrote about how you love art or how you're super artistic or how you studied art and all this stuff for your first paper, then maybe for the second paper you could do research about how art is defined. But to me, it's like what is something is not definable. You know what I mean? So. I don't really think there's going to be an answer to the question. Okay. Like, what is love? What is love? I don't know. What is good writing? Well, that's really up for debate, too, but I have a rubric. So I promise I'll stick to the rubric. Okay, so I want you to think about that topic you could spend 16 weeks with. Um... All right, so the proposal you write, the draft, they'll all be related, and then you'll spin off something for papers two and three. You'll spin off. So, for example, a student wrote about being a refugee. A student wrote about, I've had several students write about being a refugee. One student was like, a, if he went back to his own country last semester, if he went back to his own country, they would execute him. So he could never go home. And so he wrote about, what happened in his first paper, like how he hid in the forest and he left his country and all that stuff, and that he never saw his brother again and things like that. Um, yeah. You, the class will read your proposal when you submit it to me, and that's a bigger question about privacy too. When you, um, now, is it completely secret? and I can guarantee you that only I will ever read it. No, because 
think about, I don't know, if were you, was anybody in school, um, was anybody here at LCC in the spring? Do you remember when the college got shut down because of the cybersecurity thing? Yeah. I want you to know, I, I'm telling you right now, that nothing you, n nothing you post online, including your memoir, can I guarantee is never going to be shared with anybody in the world because I don't have control over cyber attacks and things like that. Um, so you post something, you post me the paper, um, it should be something that it's okay if other people read, but occasionally if you tell me certain things, I have to do something. So it should be shareable information in the sense that like if somebody, if somebody is um, having mental health issues and different things like that and they tell me things in their paper, I am legally bound to file a report with LCC. If someone tells me they're being like harassed, I'm legally bound to report that. So that's just all stuff to think about. But I, you weren't asking all those questions, but I open it. I don't send it to anybody. I review it. I give you feedback. Oh, definitely. In this day and age, you really, we all need to really think about what we put in writing and share with other people in any way. So how that stuff can like live forever, you know, like stuff on Facebook and all that, like some employers will go and Google your name and see what all's out there. So, but um, your stuff will stay, what you submit to me will stay within D2L and I'm the one that reads the whole paper. Uh, if I want to share your paper, because I do have samples, I will ask you, is it okay if I take your name off here and share it as an example for other semesters? And then I ask. So we do have students. I ask the students, can I use your paper? I thought it was super good and I'd like to be able to use it. So today you're just, you're going to, later on, you're going to be thinking about what you want to do for your topic and so forth. Okay, so I have examples. A student going into sports medicine is also an avid sports participant and follower. They decide to take this career path because someone in their family suffers a sports injury. Student decides to write their personal narrative or who am I story framing it in the area of sports. So start building the text they will continue working on. Student decides to go into the area of juvenile justice because of past life experiences they have had in high school. Student tells the story of what life events impacted their interest in this area. Student is interested in Black Lives Matter and surrounding issues. Student uses the paper to describe why a student is interested in this topic. Um, two real examples, student A had a, relative, had a relative harm by police brutality and thus had a deep interest in the topic. A different student B had a parent who is a police officer and thus wished to defend the goodness of police officers. Student B had a deep interest. Example four, student has been stereotyped throughout their life for some quality or identity, veteran status, sports player status, international resident, social or economic status, geek, nerdishness status, race, gender, sexual identity or orientation, religion, age, ethnicity, and so on. I've had all of these types of papers. This has caused the student to be very aware of others who possess this quality and how it can be argued for their equal or equitable treatment in work. Like one um, student wrote about how he was always stereotyped because he was on the football team and that he was like a, you know, different euphemisms that are used towards really athletic persons. He, and he talked about that. Um, Oh, student loves writing. Student wishes to write this mini memoir and then continue in this course, building their mini, mini memoir into a more substantial writing. They just want to write their memu, memoir and then they want to keep writing their memoir. You can do that, okay? You can write, like say you're going to write about growing up in the, let's see, when did you grow up? 2010s? Wait, 2010s? 2000s to 2010s? You'd have to go back, you might need to go back and do research about what was going on politically, historically, and all the other stuff back in those days. For me, I wrote a memoir one time. I have an example in here, but it's pretty long, but I grew up in the 60s, 70s. 
So I had to research about the 60s and 70s. I don't, you know, it really helped me understand what was going on because I didn't understand a lot of things that were happening in the context of history. But after I read about it, it really helped me gain some self-awareness. Example six, student loves trees. She wants to write her later papers about the benefit of planting trees. And she writes her first paper, the memoir, about how she's had a lifelong love of trees. That's a misspelling. Okay, are we getting the idea? 